Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Vessalatu vesselamu ala nabiyyina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ve men tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmiddin. Amma ba'd. We continue reading in the chapter of the author he has mentioned. Rahimahullahu ta'ala. Babu ma ja'a fi sihir. The chapter with regards to the clarification of that which has come. Uh, the chapter with regards to that which has come from the clarification of magic, from the clarification of a sihr, and it is magic. And we have seen, alhamdulillah, in the previous class, uh, several affairs related to this issue. And the author, he mentioned several verses from them. He said, Rahimahullahu ta'ala wa qawlillahi ta'ala wa laqad alimu laman ishtarahu ma lahu fil akhirati min khalaq. And the statement of Allah the Most High, verily, those who have purchased it, meaning those who have learned it, meaning magic, and used it and applied it, they know that they have no portion in the hereafter whatsoever. And we have seen what the people of knowledge have mentioned with regards to this verse and those verses before it. And we have seen that the one who learns magic and he performs it, he must take two steps before it will be beneficial for him. And the first is to cast the book behind his back and to disbelieve in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and to belittle the Qur'an and to deface it and to degrade it. And then likewise he must obey the shayateen and their commandments and their, and their orders and he must submit to them uh, and worship them besides Allah Azza wa Jal. And the one who performs this, وَلِيَعْذُ billah then at this time uh, he will be able to work magic by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by his command and according to the wisdom of Allah azza wa jal. And likewise with regards to these verses uh, we have seen that uh, magic and the one who performs magic and the likes uh, that the ruling is that uh, this action is disbelief and the one who performs it is a disbeliever. And we have seen that from uh, more than one aspect, from seven different aspects in the context of those verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. And this has proceeded. And we continue reading the author. He says, Rahimahullahu ta'ala wa qawrihi yu'minuna bil jibiti wa ta'ud. In the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, and they believe in al-jibit wa ta'ud. And this is uh, like the previous verse as well in reference to... Uh, uh, in reference to the Jews and this verse has proceeded and it is known that the Jews they are the nation that is most known and they are the people who are who are most known for using magic and the likes like this throughout history the people who use the magic the most it was known to be from them from the Jews they believe in al uh, and they believe in al-Taghut and uh, the author he mentioned after this قال عمر رضي الله عنه الجبت السحر والطاغوت الشيطان The meaning of الجبت عمر he says رضي الله عنه السحر magic and الطاغوت الشيطان والطاغوت الشيطان and the meaning of الطاغوت is الشيطان so we see that the author he mentioned this narration from Umar radiallahu anhu and he is uh, explaining and mentioning the interpretation of the word jibt in this verse. And he mentioned that is that it is a sihr. And the people of knowledge they mention about this that this is tafsiru uh, shay bi ba'di afradihi. That this is an example here of interpreting a word or interpreting something to mean uh, something from uh, from its meanings, mentioning one aspect of its meanings, meaning the word jibt, it has many meanings, or many things are included in this word, or many ideas and understandings fall underneath uh, this word and what it means and refers to, and from them, magic, and from them, magic. And likewise, at tagut and at tagut as well, it has many different meanings, or many different things could be considered tagut, but from them, or from the worst of them, and from the head of them, shaitan, a shaitan, as is here. And this is from the benefits of understanding the tafsir of, of the salaf, that sometimes they would interpret a particular word in the book of Allah, and the likes like this to mean something. And if we look at another one from the salaf, he would also interpret it as well, but to mean something different. 
And uh, then if we look at that actual word, we will see that that word is an encompassing word and it has uh, a large meaning and all of these interpretations, they fall under that same meaning. And uh, this is uh, whenever there is an explanation and interpretation that varies or is different, but all of the meanings are correct. But all of the meanings are correct. So al uh, in general, the people of knowledge, they mention linguistically, it includes every aspect of falsehood. al every aspect of falsehood, everything that is contrary to the truth with regards to statements and actions. With regards to statements and actions. So every falsehood and false statement and every sta and action likewise that is false and wrong and misguidance uh, that is contrary to the truth, then ling linguistically this is considered al -jibit. And from the worst of that, from the worst of that, a sihr. And from the worst of that, uh, a sihr. So we see that this is any tafsiru al lovely bi ba'di afradihi. Tafsir al lovely bi ba'di afradihi. That this is to interpret this particular term with one of the meanings that this term includes. But it's. It's not restricted to this. So we wouldn't say that Egypt is only Sihr, but rather Egypt is Shirk and, uh, and, uh, and also fortune telling Al Kahana and all of the statements of falsehood and claims to know the unseen and the likes like this. This is all considered Egypt and all statements of falsehood and likewise actions of falsehood that are incorrect and contrary to the truth. This is all considered Egypt. This is all considered Egypt. So likewise, uh, we see the interpretation of Umar for Tagut, uh, Allahu anhu. He said, "As Shaytan." So likewise, we have seen previously that uh, Tagut it is from uh, the Masdar at Tugian, and this means to transgress the limits and to go beyond the boundaries. So everyone uh, or everything that has caused the person to go beyond the boundaries of and fall into disobedience and transgress the limits of Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, go beyond that which Allah has set and allowed everything that causes an individual to do this then this is considered a taghut and from the head of them is shaitan Iblis la'anahullah so therefore we see <clears throat> as the people uh, of knowledge have mentioned that Tughyan, uh, it means to transgress the limits. And the Tawut is the one who causes someone to transgress the limits with regards to the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. But the people of, of knowledge, they mention the benefit that Tawut, and this is with regards to objects and individuals. So therefore, al jibit it's, re it's related to statements and actions, statements of falsehood and evil, and actions likewise of falsehood and evil that are contrary to the truth. And as for a tawud, then this is with regards to ayan, with regards to objects and individuals, and the like like this. So this is the interpretation that uh, Umar he has mentioned radiallahu anhu, and we see that this interpretation is not restricted to this issue, but this is from the meanings, from the meanings of al jibt, sihr, magic, and this is what is uh, intended here to clarify. And likewise, from the meanings of, of a ta'ud and from the worst of the ta'ud, we mean a sharri and wa a ta'wagid, a shaitan, a shaitan, the devil, the devil. Likewise, the author he mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, وَقَالَ جَابِرٌ and also Jabir, and Ibn Abdullahi, رضي الله عنهما, he mentioned, a ta'wagid, kuhanun, kana yanzilu alayhim, a shaitanu, fi kuli hayin, fi kuli hayin wahidun. That at Tawagit, which is the plural of Tawud, they are the Kuhan. The Kuhan are the fortune tellers and those people who claim to know the unseen and those people who claim to know where the lost and uh, misplaced objects are or people and the likes like this and they claim to know the future or the unseen and the things that are unknown to the people. And the likes like this, they claim to know these things. These people are called Kuhan or Kahin. And the Kuhan is the plural. So Jabir, he is saying that the Tawagit, they are the Kuhan, those people who claim to have knowledge of the unseen. And those people who claim to be able to predict the future and know where the missing items and objects are found and people and the likes like this. Jabir, he says those Kuhan, they used to descend uh, the shaitan used to descend upon used to de used to descend upon them 
and a meaning before the revelation. And we have seen this issue in the previous chapters that the shayateen, they would strive to listen to some of the uh, revelation being re revealed in the heavens and they would take a portion of that and they would mix it. They would find one statement from that and they would mix it with a hundred lies and they would bring it to the magicians and to the fortune tellers and the likes like this and the people would believe them. Jabber, he mentions about them, uh, 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 In every tribe there was one of them. And in those days, in the times of Al Jahiliya, there would be for every tribe one of these fortune tellers or one of these people who claim to know the unseen, one of these individuals who would seek aid and assistance in the jinn uh, to work uh, these affairs and to have this information and the likes like this. And the people they used to go to these individuals from their tribes and uh, he would solve their disputes for them and he would advise them and direct them and the likes like this. And this issue that the author here is referring to, and from the statement of Jabir radiallahu anhu, it has come in the tafsir of Ibn Abi Hatim, rahimahullahu ta'ala, from the narration of Wahb ibn Munabbi. And he's from the, the Tabi'een, rahimahullahu ta'ala. He died in the year 114. He said, Sa'altu Jabir ibn Abdullahi an al tawagheed alati kanu yatahakamuna ilayha. He said, I asked Jabir ibn Abdullahi radiallahu anhumma about, about the tawagheed, that they used to take them as false judges and they used to uh, go and return to them. They used to go to them and return their affairs to them in disputes and the likes like this. And uh, he said, radiallahu anhu, inna fi juhaynata wahidan, wa fi aslama wahidan, wa fi hilal wahidan, wa fi kulli hayyan wahidan. That verily in the tribe of Juhayna there will be one, one individual like this, and also in the tribe of Islam, and also in the tribe of Hilal, and uh, in every tribe, uh, from the tribes of the Arabs they would have one. He said, وَهُمْ كُهَانٌ تَنْزِلُ عَلَيْهِمْ الشَّيَاطِينَ And they are the, the Kuhan, the fortune tellers and those people who claim to know the unseen, and the shaytan or the devils would, disp would descend upon them. And the devils would descend upon them. So likewise, this is another interpretation of a word with one of its meanings. Not any interpreting the word, meaning that this word only means the Kuhan and that the Tawut is only Al-Kahin. But rather, it includes many ideas and many things uh, fall underneath this term. And this is explain, uh, giving an explanation of this term with one of its meanings. With one of its meanings. With one of its meanings. So we see that uh, the author is clarifying this issue uh, and continuing to mention the reality of a sihr and that it is it is disbelief. So all of these verses here and these statements here to clarify that in Egypt it is uh, impermissible and it is a foul way and yani magic it is impermissible it's a foul way and it is disbelief and the one who performs it he has disbelieved and the one who is pleased with it likewise he has disbelieved after this the author rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned the narration of abi huraira radiyallahu anhu anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal ijtanibu as-sab'a al-mubiqat he mentioned the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said avoid the seven destroying sins and the destructive sins al-mubiqat meaning al-mubiqat ay al-muhlikat al-mubiqat al-muhlikat and these are sins that are destructive and they will destroy uh, an individual and uh, cause him to earn the anger and the punishment of Allah azza wa jal in this life and in the hereafter Ijtanibu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, avoid and stay away from. And he, did, he didn't say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, utruku, and he leave them. But rather, ijtanibu, this is even greater in the understanding to avoid and to stay away. And to leave something is one thing, but then to make effort to, to leave it entirely and then to avoid it and then strive to stay away from it. Likewise, this has an even greater meaning. So these things are very dangerous. And not only should one leave them, but he should avoid them and stay away from them. And he should not come near them. In this manner like this, اجتنبوا السبع المبيقات Stay away from the seven destructive sins. Stay away from the seven destructive sins. Seven here does not mean that there are only seven likewise, but rather there are many. 
and some of the people of knowledge have mentioned that they are seven, uh, 70. And even other people of knowledge have mentioned rather they are closer to 700. In any case, any, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned these seven in this context to clarify their danger and to warn the people from them, but not to restrict the number of major sins to seven. And we see in other narrations likewise that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that uh, Akbar Al-Kiba'ir, the greatest of the major sins. And, and he would mention some of these here, and also he mentioned Uquq Al-Walidayn. Uquq Al-Walidayn would call a Zur to, uh, to disobey the parents and also to, to false testify. But these two issues are not mentioned in the seven here. These two issues are, are not mentioned in these seven in these seven here. So this clarifies the intent uh, behind uh, the number here seven that is not restricted to seven. But rather there are other narrations also where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned other issues uh, and other major sins for other than these seven. And he has uh, described them as being from Al-Kaba'ir, from the major sins and from the Mubiqat and from the great sins that are destructive and that will... Uh, earned an individual the anger of Allah and the punishment. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Ishtanibu wa sabi al mubiqat, avoid and stay away from entirely the seven major sins, destructive sins." Qalu ya Rasulullah wa ma hunna. So at this time the companions they said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, and what are they? O oh, Messenger of Allah, and what are they?" Qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Ashirku billah." He said the first one, ashirku billah, to associate partners with Allah. And he began with the first one because this is the greatest of all of the major sins, al billah, to associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. And this has come likewise in the narration of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu in uh, as sahihain And he said to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyu them bin a'zam, which sin is the greatest? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, And taj'ala lillahi niddan, wa huwa khalaqaka. He said, And that you set up a rival and a partner with Allah and worship, and he is the one who created you. And he is the one who created you. And he, this is the, the greatest and the, and the most dangerous and the most severe uh, and the worst of all sins to associate partners with Allah and worship, and he is the one who has created you. And he is the one who has created you. So after this, immediately, to indicate the severity of the next crime and the next dangerous and destructive sin, and this is likewise the shahid for the author and the point of reference with regards to this narration in this chapter, he said, وَالسِّحْرُ وَالسِّحْرُ And magic, and magic. So directly after this great, and the, after the greatest and the worst and the most severe and dangerous of all sins, a shirk, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned number two, Asihr, magic, magic, to clarify the issue and the danger uh, of this affair. To clarify the issue and the danger of, of this affair, the affair of magic. That this is something that a believer, he'll be aware of and he will avoid it and he will stay away from it. Ijtanibu, Ijtanibu, stay away from it and avoid it and leave off entirely and stay far away from it and stay far away from it. After this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned the third Mubiqa. He said, uh, and to kill a soul that which Allah has uh, made impermissible which Allah has made sacred except with right except with right meaning to, to kill somebody or to murder somebody without right and uh, the only time that it will be done in right uh, as has come likewise in the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud and for a Muslim soul as well as also in Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا يحل دم امرئن مسلمين إلا بإحدى ثلاث. That uh, the blood of a Muslim individual will never be permissible or is not permissible except in three cases. الثيب الزاني, the one who has been married and then he committed fornication, والنفس بالنفس, and a life for a life, and if one were to murder someone, he will be murdered for that person, in the law of equality, and recompense, والتاريك لدينه والمفارق للجماعة, and the one who leaves his deen, and he separates from the congregation of the Muslims, and he leaving his deen, meaning he apostated, so at this time, the blood would be permissible, and this is what is intended here, إلا بالحق, except and right. 
But even in this case, it will be permissible meeting in the court of a, of a Muslim judge, not according to the individuals and the, uh, and the people in the masajid or in the communities, but rather these are affairs that are returned back to the Muslim ruler and the Muslim judge and will be handled in a Muslim court. And, and the likes like this is, and this is not in the hands of, of individuals. In any case, it's clarifying here the danger of murder and killing a soul without right. And also from the understanding of bil illa bil haq, also is one who is a mu'ahid, one who has a contract with the believers, one who has a contract with the Muslims, and the likes like this. It's also not permissible to, to, to spill his blood or to harm him or to oppress him in any manner whatsoever. Those who the Muslims have a contract with and those who the Muslims have an agreement with, even if they're from the disbelievers, the mu'ahid. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that whoever killed the Mu'ahid, then he will not find the, the scent of paradise. And I mean, he has a threat likewise of the, of the punishment of the hellfire. The one who betray, betrays the covenant, be, betrays the contracts, even if it's with the non-Muslim. He has a contract with him, a peace treaty, and the likes like this. Then uh, to harm him and to uh, shed his blood, this is impermissible in the deen of Allah Azawajal. This is impermissible in the deen of Allah Azawajal. And from here we see the foulness and the facade of those individuals who make peace agreements and they enter the lands of the non-believers upon contracts and they sign contracts and their visas and the likes like this whenever they come in that they will not harm the people and that they will, uh, they will not transgress the boundaries and the limits against the people and the likes like this. And then after that they come and they, spread they shed blood and they spread mischief in the land. This is all contrary and they kill individuals and some of them even because of their severe misguidance they claim that they are doing that in, uh, in, in the name of jihad or in the name of, uh, of al-Islam and the likes like this and this is misguidance and this is, uh, this is misguidance and this is evil and this is not permissible it's not permissible to harm uh, someone uh, without right and, and it's not permissible to, uh, <clears throat> to kill the people and to murder the people and to shed the blood of the people especially those who are Muslims and especially likewise those uh, disbelievers who have we have contracts with, and we have oaths uh, of and, uh, and treaties with of peace and the likes like this. This is uh, from the ways of treachery and the ways of evil and the ways of of misguidance. So likewise, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned wa aklu arriba, wa aklu arriba, and also eating interest and he taking interest and he eating it, meaning uh, and he taking it. And uh, what it means by eating interest and the aklu riba and he using it and participating in it in any manner whatsoever, using it uh, and participating in it in, in any manner uh, whatsoever. And Allah Azza wa Jal He has mentioned the dangers of uh, of interest. He has mentioned mentioned. The dangers of interest in his book. And he says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alladina yakuluna riba, la yakumuna illa kama yakumu ladina, illa kama yakumu ladi yatahabatu hu shaytanu min al mess. That verily those who eat riba and usury will not stand on the day of resurrection except like the standing of a person beaten by shaytan, leading him to insanity. Leading him to insanity. Alladina yakuluna riba, la yakumuna illa kama yakumu ladi yatahabatu hu shaytanu min al mess. Thadi kabi anno hum kalu in the malbay u mithru riba, wa halallahu albay, wa harama riba. And he said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is because they say trading is only like usury, interest, whereas Allah has permitted trading and forbidden riba. He has, for, he has forbidden interest and usury. He has forbidden interest uh, and usury. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again warding the people. فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ فَانْتَهَى فَلَهُ مَا سَلَفَ وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ عَادَ فَأُولَئِكَ أَسْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ That so whoever rece receives an admonition from his Lord and stops eating riba and he taking and partaking in riba and giving it and taking it and benefiting from it and, and paying for it and the likes like this and, and signing contracts based upon that, he shall not be punished for the past. The one who fell into it before and then he, he received admonition and he repented from Allah Azza wa Jal, then he will not be held accountable for the past. He shall not be punished for the past. His case is for Allah to judge. But whoever returns to riba and usury and interest after this, and after the warning has come to them and the admonition has come to them and the clarification of the ruling has come to them, such are the dwellers of the fire 
they will abide therein forever. They will abide therein forever. This issue of arriba, uh, this is a dangerous issue. This is something that uh, is uh, uh, very frightening. This is something that is very frightening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned after these verses, Ya ayyuladina amanu taqullah, wadharu ma baqiya min riba in kuntum mu'mineen. O you who believe, be afraid of Allah. And this is with regards to interest. Be afraid of Allah and give up what remains due to you from riba. And he from now onward, and he from now on, somebody who entered into a contract of riba, he will finish that contract and, and never return. He will finish that contract and never return to riba. He will repent. He will finish the contract and obligation that he had entered into, and he will finish paying that. And after that, he will repent. I mean, he will repent, but he will can, he will fulfill this contract and never return to riba again, and never return to to riba again. And Allah He says, "This is what you must do uh, from now onward, if you are really believers. If you are really believers." And then Allah Azza wa Jalla He said, warning the people, "In them tafalu fadhanu biharb min Allahi wa Rasuli." And if you do not do it, and if you do not leave off interest, and you, you don't repent from that, and, and not partake in it anymore, then let it be known. Then take notice of war from Allah. Then take notice of war from Allah and His Messenger. When tubitum falakum ru'usu amwadikum la tadhlimuna wa la tudhlamun. But if you repent, then you shall have your capital sums. Deal not unjustly by asking more than your capital sums, and you shall not be dealt with unjustly by receiving less than your capital sums. So therefore, there is a great threat with regards to partaking in riba, and the one who the admonition has come to him, and then he refuses and rejects that, and he does not repent, and he does not leave riba, he does not leave the interest, and then he has an announcement of war. War from Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like this, again, the dangers, my noble brothers and sisters, of this affair, interest. It has been mentioned by Ibn Daqiq al Eid, rahimahullah ta'ala, and he died in the year 702. From the people of knowledge, he mentioned, وَهُوَ مُجَرَّبٌ وَهُوَ مُجَرَّبٌ لِسُوءِ الْخَاتِمَةِ نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ he said, and this is something that has been tried. Any of those who partake in interest until they die, this is something that has been tried and tested. They have witnessed it and seen it, meaning it's mujarrab. Mujarrab meaning that this is something that has tried, they have seen it and it has been, it's been tested and tried. Those people who partake in interest, many times that's the reason for them to have a foul and bad ending. Mujarrabun. Mujarrabun. Wuhu mujarrabun li su'il khatima. And this is something that they have seen and they have witnessed individuals. And that this is known that the people who had foul and bad endings, they died in a bad manner. There were people who were partaking interest. فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Have notice, take notice, and let it be known of a war from Allah and His Messenger. Of a war from Allah and His Messenger. There, there is no mention in the Qur'an, in the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla, of a, of a war. Let, let it be known and announced and take notice of a war from Allah and His Messenger for any sin except for the sin. The sin of partaking the riba. Aklu riba. Aklu riba. This is uh, something to be aware of. This is something to be afraid of. To fear Allah and to repent. If a person, he fell into that, he will repent. He will repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. And if he repented, then he will keep his sums and the money that he has that he earned from that. He will be pardoned for that. Bi idnillahi ta'ala. If he repents sincerely to Allah and he leave it from that day, and he not and and he not and, and he would not delve into another contract that has interest in the likes like this, and then Allah will forgive him and he's the most forgiving and merciful. But if a, if a person he does not receive admonition, and he does not stop, and leave off. This dangerous sin, mubiq, and mubiq, mubiq, yani muhlik, meaning it would destroy a person. Then it could be a means and a reason for him to die in a foul manner, to die upon other than iman, or to die upon to die upon sin and to have a foul death. Ayyadan billah, ayyadan billah. I read it again. The statement of Ibn Dqiq al-Eid, rahimahullah taala, wa hu mujarrab li su'il khatima, yani riba. Riba, interest, taking interest. This has been tried and tested for ind individuals have been seen and the, the people of knowledge have noticed and learned that those individuals who have su al khatima, nas'alullah al afi wa salama, they have a bad ending. They have a bad ending. They have a bad ending. It has been tried and tested that those are individuals who are partaking in riba. 
those are individuals who are partaking in riba and there are several more of these mubiqat inshallah we take them in the class to come hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam